Now, if electricity is produced by copper and carbon, the friction of copper and carbon, then where do we go in the human body and find the organ that produces electricity? We find that it's the brain. The brain is the center of motor. The nervous system is the conduit that carries the electricity to various points of the body to cause motion. Now, should we ask what is the composition of the brain? No, it is here for what? Carbon and copper. The presence of what? Carbon. Thank you. All right, I'm back. Now, I went and grabbed my hourglass because this is the best way to give you a example of what I'm about to say next. Think about this dark sand at the bottom of the hourglass as carbon, right? Think about carbon as the building block of life, okay? Um, think about everything almost in the entire universe is carbon-based at some point. Okay? Melanin is stardust. It is what space is made out of. Okay? There are some there are some to believe that melanin is used to coat the space shuttles when they send space shuttles out into space. That's the only way they can get around. Now this makes this actually makes a lot of sense if you really think about it, because what is space? It's not air. So how the fuck are they shooting rockets and shit to you know what I'm saying to propel themselves through space? Rockets are based off of combustion that has to do with oxygen and things of that nature. There's no oxygen in space, but if space shuttles were coated with melanin, and if melanin had to do with the way that they get around it would actually make a lot of sense because in my own personal belief out of my own studies and research I highly 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 think that space is really melanin and space is really dark matter I believe that dark matter and melanin are one of the same things melanin seems to be the physical form of dark matter Okay, so let's take this theory and let's really put it to the test. Let's say that this matter here is dark matter or space. Let's just say that this in between level here, this little point in between right here is the pineal gland. And this area right here is your body. Now, this is what happens. As space feels your pineal gland here, right? Your pineal gland there. It goes into your body in the form of melanin. Your pineal gland is something of what they call the third eye or the first eye, depending on your school of thought. Why do they call it an eye? Well, they call it an eye because it's kind of sensitive to light, just like how your eyes are. So it knows when it's light and when it's dark. So when it's light, the pineal gland is absorbing all of the light, okay? And it's shutting the melanin down. It's absorbing the sunlight and shutting the melanin down. So then at night, it takes that sunlight that it has um, absorbed and um, collected and then spits it out in the form of melanin through your body or melatonin which delivers the melanin to the rest of your body. So carbon seems to be everywhere in the universe. So if you're if your pineal gland is absorbing light from the sun, the sun has to travel through space, which I believe is melanin, right? Or some form of carbon on some level. So if... 
if the sun travels on the carbon, right, the light from the sun travels from the carbon, hits the atmosphere, which has carbon in it, and then the light is absorbed through the air molecules, which are refracting, and that's what causes light, and the air molecules have carbon in it. The light reaches your pineal gland, which is absorbing the light, and your pineal has carbon in it. And then now the pineal gland is converting the sunlight, and then now distributing it in your body in the form of melanin or melatonin, which, which drives the melanin to the rest of your pigment. Like for example, look at my gums. I don't know if you can see this. My gums are brown, right? These are signs of, um, of melanin, okay? Anytime you see dark pigment, your brown eyes, your black hair, your brown gums, the moles on your face, this is signs of melanin, okay? So, um, if the pineal gland absorbs light and then redistributes the light through a carbon substance called melatonin with a carbon pigment called melanin and then your skin is now dark, right? And your skin can absorb the light. It's like a cycle. It's like a cycle. Like a cycle. Um, It's like a solar panel. Your skin is like a solar panel. And that's why probably solar panels are black because black absorbs light, right? That thing that we call carbon, it seems to be the answer to a lot of questions. The more carbon, the more life. So it made me really think about, well, what is carbon? And how does that work? So when we speak and we exhale, we're releasing carbon dioxide. So, release, so we are creating a conversion of carbon every time we do an inhale-exhale sequence. So that lets me further to believe that the words that we speak... When we, when we deliver these vibrational words that we call chants or words or what have you, not only do they have a vibration that can manifest, they also have the building block of all life. They have carbon. So when you're speaking things, um, it's true what they say. You can speak things into existence. And this is the proof of it. It's the carbon in the words. It's the vibration in addition to the carbon. So if light from the sun can ride through space, which is carbon, which is melanin, it's light, right? And then get to us, we reabsorb it, convert it again. And then with our melanin, we can manifest or create things with proper you know words and sounds and then we are creating a carbon and then the thought of what we're thinking about rides on that vibration in the carbon after so long the molecules from which you're speaking manifest into physical reality especially if you speak things over and over because you're just putting out more carbon more carbon more carbon more oxygen atoms 
and then eventually these atoms will meet up somewhere and form something. It's a theory. Makes sense. But yeah, love your melanin. Cherish your melanin.